How do you do I? Here we are with chapter eight, lesson number three, maximum and minimum values. Now, if I asked you to square any number you like, the result can never be a negative. Imagine if you square a positive number, you get a positive number. If you square a negative number, you get a positive number. If you square zero, you get zero. So the smallest value you can get whenever you square something is going to be zero. And this will occur when this number that you are squaring is zero. So what you can do is you can apply that knowledge to find out the maximum and minimum values of a function. For example, if you had y equals x squared plus three, you may be asked to find the maximum or minimum value of that function. So what you should already realize is that because you've got a positive coefficient of x squared, this graph will be like a smiley face. So it means there is going to be a minimum value there. The maximum value though, well really the graph would just keep on going towards infinity. If you put in different values of x, as x approached infinity, y would also approach infinity. So it just keeps on going. But there is though, as I said, a minimum value here. So with this one, the minimum value is going to be, well, again, because you've got something squared, the smallest value that could be would be zero. But then you're adding on three. So you go from zero to three. So the minimum value is going to be three. And that is when this thing that you are squaring is equal to zero. So here we're squaring x. So x must be equal to zero. So you can say then that there's a minimum turning point of this function when x is zero and y would be three. So it's zero, three. Let's do a few more examples like that. So example two, y equals two x squared. Here again, the minimum value. Well, again, because you're squaring something, the smallest value you can get is zero. If you times that by two, that's just zero still. And that will occur when this thing that you are squaring is zero. So here we're squaring x, so x must be equal to zero. Giving you then a minimum turning point of zero, zero. Example three, y equals five x squared minus eight. Again, you're thinking I'm squaring something, so the smallest value I can get is zero. If I times that by five, it's still zero, but then I'm taking away eight. So I'm going from zero to negative eight. So that is the minimum value. And that occurs when this thing you are squaring is equal to zero. Here I'm squaring x, so x must be equal to zero. So the minimum turning point here, x would be zero and y would be negative eight. Example four, y equals x minus two in brackets, all squared. Again, I'm squaring something, so the smallest value of that is zero and then not doing anything else after I'm squaring it. So the minimum value is zero, and that occurs when this thing you're squaring is equal to zero, so x minus two must be equal to zero, meaning then that x would be equal to two. Woohoo! The minimum turning point then, x is two, and y would be zero. Let's try another one. Example five, y equals x plus six, in brackets, squared plus one. So the minimum value this time Again, because I'm squaring something, the smallest value I can get here is zero, but then I'm adding one, so it goes from zero to one. And that occurs when this thing that I'm squaring is equal to zero. So x plus six must be equal to zero, meaning then x would be equal to negative six. The minimum turning point then, x would be negative six, y would be one, giving you a minimum turning point of negative six, one. Example six, y equals four bracket x minus five all squared plus 0 0.7. So the minimum value this time, again, when it's the minimum value of something squared, that's zero, times that by four, that's still zero. Add on 0 0.7 means the minimum will go from zero to 0 0.7. And that occurs when this thing I'm squaring is equal to zero. So here I'm squaring x minus five. So you'd say x minus five must be equal to zero meaning then the value of x is going to be five. So there's a minimum turning point when x is five and y then would give you 0 0.7. Example seven, y equals negative x squared. Vale, what do you notice about this one? The negative, yes. What does the negative do to it? 
Well, if you think about it, if you have a positive coefficient of x squared, you're going to get a smiley face for your graph. So you would have a minimum value there. However, if you have a, a negative coefficient of x squared, the graph will look more like that. It will be like a sad face, meaning that instead of having a minimum turning point, it will have a maximum turning point. So since the coefficient of x squared is negative, the graph will be like a sad face, giving a maximum value, not a minimum value. Also, if you square something, the smallest value you can get is a zero. But then what you're doing is you're taking the negative of that, meaning it will then be the maximum value rather than the minimum. So here the maximum value is going to be, well, when I square something, the smallest value you can get is zero but then I'm taking the negative, so the maximum value would be zero. And that occurs when this thing I'm squaring is equal to zero, so in other words, x equals zero. So this time, the maximum turning point would be zero, zero. Example eight, y equals negative x squared plus nine. Again, because I've got a negative coefficient of x squared, the graph's going to be like a sad face, so this bit up here is going to be the maximum turning point. So the maximum would be, well, because it's x squared, the smallest value of that was going to be zero. The negative will make it the maximum, but then I add on nine, which means then the maximum value is going to be nine. And that would occur when this thing that I'm squaring is equal to zero. So in other words, x equals zero. So there will be a maximum turning point of zero, nine. Example nine, y equals negative bracket, x plus three all squared minus two. So this time again, if you multiplied that out, you'd get a negative coefficient for the x squared. So it's going to be a maximum value. And the maximum value this time, well, if you think about it, you're squaring something for something. So that gives you zero. Take the negative, it's still zero. Take away two, meaning then it'll go to negative two. And that will occur when this bit that I'm squaring is equal to zero. So x add three is what we're squaring. So you set x add three equal to zero and solve for x. So x would be negative three. So there'll be a maximum turning point when x is negative three. And if it is, then you know y would be negative two. Example 10, find the minimum value of y equals two x squared plus 20 x minus seven and the corresponding value of x. So here, you've got 2x squared plus 20x minus 7. It's difficult there to work out what the minimum value would be unless you've got something squared. Here, although we've got an x squared, it makes it harder because we've also got this term, um, an x term in here. So what you need to do with this is you need to complete the square. That way, you're going to get something squared plus or minus a number, which makes it really easy to tell what the minimum would be. So complete the square for that. Uh, you need just a coefficient of one for the x squared. So take out the two as a common factor. Then you've to have two brackets. And then you'd have x squared plus 10x, close brackets. And then take away seven would stay as it is. From there, complete the square. This bit in brackets, x squared add 10x, half the coefficient of x, you get five. So you'd have x add five all squared. And then square that, take it away. You're taking away 25 multiply out your square brackets. So you'd have two times x add five all squared, two times negative 25 is negative 50, and keep the negative seven as it is. From there, negative 50, take away seven, gives you negative 57. So the minimum value here, well remember the minimum value when you square something zero, times that by two, it's still zero, take away 57, the minimum value is negative 57. And this would occur when this thing that I'm squaring is equal to zero. Here I'm squaring x add five, so set that equal to zero, and then find out what x would be. And x is obviously negative five. The minimum turning point then, well, if x was negative five, you would have a minimum of negative 57. So that is your turning point. Let's try another one. Which fraction is larger? Is it a half? Or is it one seventh? Well, if you think about it, imagine if you had a cake and you had half a cake. Imagine if you also had a seventh of a cake. Well, the half is going to be bigger than one seventh. So you can say that a fraction is larger when the denominator is smaller, which you can see here, this half is larger than the seventh. 
So the smaller the denominator, the larger the number you are going to get out. So you can find out the maximum value of a fraction when the denominator is at a minimum. If anybody wants to be a picture of that one, you've got it there. Okay, with the half and the seventh, you can clearly see that a half is larger and it's larger when the number in the bottom is smaller. So let's try an example with that. So find the maximum value of y equals 4 over x squared plus xx plus 11 and the corresponding value of x. So the maximum value then is going to occur when this denominator is at a minimum. So the maximum value occurs when x squared plus xx plus 11 is at a minimum. You can say then what the minimum would be. And to get that, remember what you need is you're needing something squared, just plus or minus a number. So complete the square. So we've got x squared plus xx plus 11. Complete the square. We'd have x plus 3 all squared. 3 squared is 9, so you take it away. Add on 11. Negative 9 add 11 will give us plus 2. So x add 3 all squared plus 2. You can therefore say then that the minimum value of that will be, well, if you square something, the smallest value you get 0. If you add on 2, you're just going to get 2. And that will be when this thing that I'm squaring is equal to 0. If it was, you'd have x add 3 equal to 0, so that x would equal negative 3. Meaning then, the maximum value of this fraction that we've got, so the maximum value of this is going to be 4 over, and then put the minimum value in. The minimum value was 2, so it would be 4 over 2. And again, that would be when x was equal to negative 3. Let's try one more. Find the maximum value of y equals 3 minus 2x minus x squared. Again, you need to complete the square. So I would write that back to front. So I've got the negative x squared, I've got the negative 2x, and I've got the plus 3. To complete the square, I want the coefficient of x squared to be 1, so take out that negative 1 as a common factor. I'm doing that for every term, meaning I'd have negative 1 brackets, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Complete the square for the bit in the square brackets. So I've got x plus 1 all squared. 1 times 1 is 1, so I take that away and leave the negative 3. From there, you can simplify that. Negative 1, take away 3 is negative 4, and multiply out these square brackets. So negative 1 times x add 1 all squared gives us negative x add 1 all squared. And negative 1 times negative 4 gives us 4. You can therefore say then that the maximum value here, again, because you've got the negative coefficient of x squared, is going to be a sad face, so you're going to have a maximum value. And the maximum value is going to be 4 when x is negative 1. Again, whenever you square something, the smallest value you get 0. The negative changes it to a maximum. And then if you add on 4, well, the maximum value will then be 4. And that will occur when this thing that I'm squaring is equal to 0. So x must be equal to negative 1. Because negative 1 add 1 is equal to 0. 13 examples with that. If you're unsure about any, just go back. If you're not sure about completing the square, go back to the last lesson. But if you're happy with that, try some of these questions. The Maths and Action Higher, page 31, exercise 2. There are plenty of these there. Good luck. Have fun. How do you do I?